Steve alluded uh, a little bit uh, this morning to, uh, I nearly didn't make it to do this preach tonight, just because of the week, uh, weeks really, uh, the level of attack of illness uh, is just astronomical at the moment. Uh, but I really felt God gave me a word uh, when I was asked if I could fill that slot. And uh, there was two things God showed me, asked me to talk about. And that, it, that there's, they're not things, they're things we hear a lot about in, in church, in prayer. You hear it spoke about in prayer uh, a lot, um, but not necessarily preached about. Uh, it was about the blood of Jesus. And the other thing he showed me was about the veil. The, the veil over the temple of the Holy of Holies. And that it was torn. It is torn. So the title, the title he gave me was, The Blood of Christ Tears the Veil. The Blood of Christ Tears the Veil. So... I'm going to perhaps read a bit more than I'd normally read, just because of I want to try and get over this message, really. Really, that the blood of Christ is so important. It's the center. And why is it the center? Really, to understand why it's the center, we've got to go right back to the beginning. We've got to go right back to the Adam and Eve days and why we were separated from God, because obviously... God told Adam and Eve not to do it, something, not, not to take that forbidden fruit. And in Genesis 3, 23 to 24, it says, So the Lord banished him from the Garden of Eden because he'd taken the fruit to work the ground from which he had been taken. <clears throat> and he drove the man out. He placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree, tree of life. There was no way back we once walked with God in a relationship with God sinless we walked with the maker of heaven and earth we had the right to because he created us that's what he created us for just to walk with him and be in his presence to love him and him to love us and to know that that's what he created us for and, and we chose sin over that and so we were separated from God and man's sin was ever, forever between us and God. There was no way. We could, how could we stand in front of a sinless God, a perfect God? In Romans 6, verse 23, it, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The wages of our sin were death. We could not be with God again. But God had made that way, that last line there, that amazing line. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. The plan was already in place. God had already made a plan from the beginning of time to restore the relationship. In the Old Testament, obviously, God brought in the Lord, didn't he? And he started thinking, well, you know, the plan was, how, how, how are our sins wiped clean? How do we... We, we do that during during the, the time before Christ comes back. So he, he set up the temple, he set up the Levitical laws, all the old, uh, 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 and, and within that temple, a lot of you will know this, I know, but just like walk with me through this. Uh, there's uh, the, the, there was there was the inner room, wasn't there? The greatest of place where God was going to dwell. We call it the holies, uh, holy of holies. It's called the holy place uh, in the old in the Old Testament, and it was there. It was there that the blood sacrifice was offered to cleanse us from, from our sin. That's where the sacrifice was offered. And it, we know it was offered by, it was offered by the high priest uh, once, once a year. And uh, in Leviticus, one of those laws, in, in the book of the laws, in Leviticus 17, verse 11, in the New King James Version, it says, why was it blood? That's what I'm trying to get to here. What, why was it blood? What is the, what's the issue with blood here? Uh, it says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, 
and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. It's quite clear there, really. If I take the first line there, it says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life in the flesh, it's not in the flesh, it's in the blood in the flesh. It's in the blood in the flesh. It's the blood in my flesh that keeps me alive. And then the second bit says, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. It's the sacrifice on the altar that pays the price for our sin, for sin, that cleanses us of our sin. That's what it is. For it is the blood, is the third bit, that makes atonement for the soul. It's clean, sinless blood that cleanses our soul. It's the blood that gives man life. It's the sacrifice of the blood, which is life, that gives us a clean start for the new year. And it all happens behind the curtain. So why did it change? Well, of course, the, the sacrifice used to be a clean, perfect animal. Uh, we, we all know that. Uh, so it needed a perfect sacrifice of perfect blood to pay the wages of sin once and for all for mankind and what we did wrong when we separated ourselves from God. So God had made that plan of Jesus to give his one and only son. And Jesus enters the world, as we know. We're coming up to that time of year, aren't we? In Matthew uh, 1 verse 23, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, God with us. The, the Bible tells us that Mary was a virgin and yet she conceived a child. In Luke 1 it says, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendant forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be, to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, Myself and Steve talked about this. Uh, our blood is in us now is determined by our parents. It's determined by two parents. There's a uh, there's a calculation on it. You can find it on the web. What happens if you've got a positive and a negative and a negative and a positive? And it's determined by your parents. Your blood group is. So so what what blood group is Jesus then? Because she, the, there was two people involved in this one. There was Mary's blood and there was Yahweh, the creator of the universe, the God, was involved in this. Steve calls it Jesus' blood, the big G positive. It was unique. There was only ever one person with that blood group because it was created from God and Mary, he had the most unique blood in the world. It only existed once and it will never exist again. It will never exist again. And it was there for you and I. It's for once and once only. So the thing was he was born with a blood that was purer than anything, never ever to exist again. All he needed to do was remain sinless and to follow the path of God. Remember the Levitical quote, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. It's clean, sin, sinless blood that will cleanse our soul. It's the blood that gives man life. It's the blood that gives us life. We need the big G positive. We need it. Hebrews 9, 11 to 12 says, but when Christ came as a high priest, replacing the high priest, 
of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands. That is to say, it is not part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption for you, me, our family, our kids, our kids' kids. He's paid the price. He has paid the price. We need to start believing the power of the blood in us. It is in us. He's for us. He's not against us. There is power in the blood of Jesus. It wipes away every sin, no matter what you've ever done, what you're ever planning to do, what you've ever thought of. It wipes it away. The big G positive can take you from sin to total redemption in an instant. There is nothing that he can't wipe away. And what is also interested in the story is the veil. We come to the veil. When Jesus breathed his last at Calvary, that veil was just torn from top to bottom, hanging on a rail, great big steel rings on a rail, fixed to a wall. How did that tear from top to bottom? In Matthew 27, verse 51, it says, At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks split and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who have died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' res resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. I thought about this thing about the veil for a while because as, as I stood here last week, I felt God say to me, I've tore the veil, but my church keeps trying to sew the veil back up. They don't like the power that is available to them. They're trying to push it back into the old ways. It was easier. The laws were easier in that sense. But there is freedom. There's freedom now. The veil is torn. That veil, when I looked into it, was absolutely massive. It, it was... It, that covered the holies of holies. It was that thick and that big that they say so nobody could fall into it and accidentally fall into the presence of God because the Bible tells us because unless you were the high priest, you would be having, you'd die. Even the high priest didn't necessarily, was guaranteed survival. Uh, it, the measurements, when we worked it out, uh, the, uh, I'll do it in two languages. 60 feet in the old language and 18.3 meters in the new language high, that's six stories high, six stories high, 30 feet, nearly 10 metres wide, and was about an inch thick, two and a half centimetres. Take your thumb. That was one serious curtain. Some, some people say it took 300 people to manoeuvre it. And I said to God, as I drove out in my car, and I was, talk, I was thinking about this, but why was it a curtain, God? We, and some of us are into buildings here, and we know a bit about architecture. And, and I thought, well, why didn't you just build a wall? You know, it, what, why didn't you just build, why did you pick a curtain? What, what's the significance of a curtain? You know, if I'm designing a house, I'd put a wall there with a door, and you walk in, open the door, and walk in through the door. Why would you have a huge curtain? And then you, I just thought, well, what about what it says here? At the moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. Everything was shaking, wasn't it? Everything was shaking when Jesus died. Everything shook. So if it was a wall, it would have just crumbled like the others, and then I just thought, well, oh, it was just the earthquake. But God knew that in advance, didn't he? Like, he used that example. No, I'm not. Because that curtain, if the wall shook, in my opinion, the whole thing would just fall down. It, you know, it would just fall down. It would either stay there or fall down. But to tear like that. So it was God just saying, I, I can do anything. And, and when I do it, you'll know about it. You'll know it's me. Because if the bricks had just fell, they'd have just said, well, they just fell down. But it made an example, didn't it? 
that actually the Holy of Holies was, was whoosh. It was open to everybody in that minute. It was no longer required. It is no longer required. It, it, there's no need for the Holy of Holies anymore. Because Jesus completed the perfect sacrifice. The most holy place was no longer required. A man was free to approach, clean from sin, via acceptance of Jesus' sacrifice, his death on the cross, and his direction in their lives, and the blood that flowed through his veins paid the price. And in addition to this, we read through that the wounds of Jesus healed our sickness as well. And I thought about that, that Jesus was whipped from top to bottom. The whips wouldn't have gone up his back, they'd have gone down his back. He was torn like the veil was torn from top to bottom. It was predicted many, many times in the Bible, we know, and I'll pick one example, Isaiah 53 verse 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities and the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. His blood not only cleanses us of sin, it restores our relationship with God, but heals us of our sicknesses too. How amazing is the blood of Christ? The big G positive. How amazing is the blood of Christ? Now, I'm, as I said, at the, alluded to at the beginning, I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of things on my plate health-wise. In the last two years, I've gone from being what I would have called healthy to having a list of 12 things I could just, I could pull off the top of my head. Some of those quite serious. You know, because of my eyes, my double vision, I'm waiting for an operation on a gland in my chest. And on that gland in my chest, that's got to be removed because there's something gone wrong with that. It's near my heart. So it's keyhole surgery, but they've got to, you know, they, they, they've, they've got to be careful. You've got to stay in for a while. And on that gland is a nodule, and they don't know what that is at the moment. And they've got to test that as well. And that's just one That's just one item, you know. Um, my wife's the same. She, she's got a few at the moment. And we, we actually said... Uh, yesterday because not, I'm not sleeping I'm in so much pain it's what things are waking me up uh, uh, and there's just so many things going on and the same for my wife we just said what what is going on here this is just so strange Lord what is going on why have we gone from being relatively healthy within two years to, to having more than we can even list to you what is going on and I said to Steve at the beginning of the week, I don't think I can do Sunday. I can't do it. I can't sleep. I spent most of Monday crying. I was working, but I was crying. Uh, I spent most of Tuesday crying and a little bit of Wednesday crying. And then on and off since. For just a level of fatigue, and I just cannot take it anymore. And, uh, and then Shirley preached this morning from Peter, 1 Peter 4. And uh, Rita prayed for me as well this morning. And again, as she laid her hands on me this morning, I felt God call me. I don't know whether you get this, but I feel this sometimes, and it's astonishing. I hear God call my name. And very often you'll hear me say, oh, I'm Andy Bache. That, that is my name. My name's Andrew. God never calls me Andy. He never calls me Andy. He calls me as clear as crystal. It's sweet. When he says my name, it's like the best time your mom ever called your name. When she said, Andrew, I love you. You're a great son. It's like that. And he called me again today. I could hear him, Andrew. Oh, Lord, it's you. I know it's you. And he said it again, Andrew. And I looked up into the corner, you know, here. Yes, Lord, what do you want? And uh, I just closed my eyes and I saw the top of the veil torn. And I could see this beautiful light emanating out the Holy of Holies. I can't describe it to you. I could see it. And he said, that's where I'm taking you. Because it's here. It's available. 
That's where I'm taking you, taking you to. And uh, as Shirley preached, I was reading as she was preaching from it. And the beginning of, of, of 4, 1 Peter 4 says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their eternal earthly lives, sorry, for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. And I read on a little bit farther, and this is strange, because I said, this is so strange what's going on. Dear friend, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But re rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. By his stripes we are healed. We are healed. The blood of Christ is more powerful than we know. And he's calling us. We are in the holies of holies. This is the holy of holies. Not this Ralph Lauren shirt, which is fantastic. Thank you to my son and his girlfriend that bought the first time out of the box. It's great. But do you hear what it says? As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires. Not for what is material. Not for what is material anymore. And when you're ill, for those of you that are ill, and we've all experienced illness, some more intense than others, but these things, don't they? They don't count. All is on your mind is, is to get well, to want to be well, to feel his presence, to know the maker of heaven and earth, to step in, to reach, to grab hold of that that he has set before you, to know that by his stripes we are healed. Nothing else matters, does it? It don't matter how many, uh, what car keys I've got in my pocket, how much money I've got, it ain't going to heal me. Only the blood of Christ and by his stripes will heal me. And I suddenly realize it, it doesn't count anymore. We need to know that truth in our heart. So God was saying to me, are, are you going to start changing your attitude? I've gone around this, this way. I can't do it anymore, Lord. I can't do Sunday night, Lord. How can I do it? I'm so ill. How, how can I do it? That, does that sound like rejoicing to you? <laughs> it, it, it don't sound really like, like rejoicing to us, did it, Trace, when we spoke about it this afternoon? It's not rejoicing. And so God was saying to me after this, I, I nearly changed the preach completely after this morning. So I, I've sort of brought it together, I hope. What, and what God is trying to say, we've got to start living the life of the life that is in us. The life of the blood of Christ is in me. I've got to start living that. And I'm not living it. I'm moaning it. I'm moaning it out. Yeah, it's bad. Yes, it's bad. It's bad. For, it can be bad for all of us, but Christ has come to set the captive free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Just the power of the blood of Christ. I need to grab hold of it. God was challenging me. Stop your moaning. And like Christ suffered for us, and he's teaching, he can teach us, not that God would put this upon us, not that I'm ever saying that my God has put this upon me or my wife. Oh, no, no. I know, I know where it's coming from, but I know where it's going. We know where it's going. That God is going to bring an amazing thing out of this. He's going to bring an amazing thing out of you. It depends on your attitude, the way you deal with it. He's challenging my attitude. I was wrong this morning, and now I've got to change it. I am challenged to change it, to start living in that faith that the veil is torn, the power is available, the blood is here. So I would just ask you, I would just, I would just challenge you, do you want that power? Do you want the power of the blood of Christ in you? Do you, do you have it? Do you know you have it? Because if you don't know you have it, you've got to ask for it. You've got to say, Jesus, I believe in you. 
I believe you're the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you went to the cross as a pure, sinless offering, that you had the only blood that could pay the price for my sin, and I am a sinner. So, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would take away my sin, that you would come into my life, that you would be Lord of my life, that you would direct it, that I would live by your word that you have given me that you would teach me by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would fill me by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would make me that new creation that you've promised to make me, that you would that you would come and direct my life and you would be the difference. Have you got it? Do you want it? Jesus is available to us all. The power of the blood of Christ can restore your relationship with the maker of heaven and earth, the one who loves you, the one who calls you Andrew. And when he calls you, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know that the maker is calling you. You know it's amazing. If you've never experienced it, get on your knees. Get on your knees and ask. Close your eyes, bow your head and ask, because Jesus is there. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed. Or a shirt, or the money, or the car, none of those things. For the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Where is your faith? Where is your hope? Make him your source. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. I just thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you were the one and only who could pay the price for my sin. And you did pay the price for my sin. You are the redeemer of my soul. You are the glory and the lifter of my head. You are my salvation, my hope. You are the lamb who was slain, but who is now alive, who is worthy to take the scroll. And I thank you, Lord God. And I thank you, the Holy of Holies is a place in history. And now we are the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that we would break out. We would know who you are in us. And we will break out into this world. We will break out into our church and our community. And we would be on fire for you. We would be on fire for you, Lord God. We give all the glory and all the honor to the plan of Yahweh, the creator of the universe. We thank you, Father, that you desired a relationship with us that much that you sent your only son. And we ask you right now for those who don't know you, Lord, that you would grab hold of them, you'd arrest them by the power of your Holy Spirit, and they would bow the knee to you, Lord Jesus Christ, and invite you into their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks.